everyone, Tony Tonkin here from Child Protection Party. Glad that you could be with me for this chat. I'm going to talk today about First Nations people and the fact that we as a society tend to ignore what is important for children uh, that are Indigenous kids and the importance we need to associate with them remaining with their families. We have a history in this country of removing children from uh, Indigenous people, a terrible history, in fact, one which we all should be ashamed of. But it is time that we make a change, that we look at the situation a little bit differently and realise that Indigenous kids need to remain, where possible, with their families. It is important that they maintain their culture, they maintain their connection. We have been very, very paternal about this over ever since we invaded this country. And the time has come whereby we need to change the way we think about this. There have been many inquiries and there have been uh, reports and apologies and heaven only knows what else about indigenous, this indigenous situation and particularly the removal of children. But it's still happening. We have entered into another period of the stolen generation and it is time that we came to terms with what it is that we are doing and find different ways to be able to ensure that children are safe but remain with their families. Now, one of those ways is to be able to ensure that the well-being of all Indigenous kids is taken care of. So <clears throat> what I'm going to use to start this conversation is to talk about a article that was in the University of New South Wales, or what they call New, New South Wales newsroom, not that they knew they had a newsroom, but apparently they do. And here in this article, they highlight some really important features that we need to consider in relation to how we approach this. I personally believe, and the Child Protection Party believe, that the best way to do this is to stop being so paternalistic and to ensure that, um, whichever way you say this, you're gonna sound paternalistic, I know, but we need to ensure that Indigenous families uh, have the opportunity to make the choices within their communities about how it is that they wish to live and how they wish to be able to manage and produce better outcomes for their kids. And I have faith that Indigenous populations are able to do that. There are many examples where communities have taken control of things, particularly domestic violence and alcohol, and, and been able to uh, improve significantly the environment in which those people are living. They can do the same in relation to child protection. So in this particular article, it, uh, it, took, it says an opinion piece reunifying First Nation families. And this is vitally important. Um, and the only way to reduce children out of home care. So it's a really interesting article and it does highlight some specific areas. So we're approaching on February the 13th, I think it is, the, uh, uh, the, the stolen, the, not the stolen generation, it's the uh, apology to the stolen generation um, by Kim Roll, which was in 2008. And we need to not only accept that acknowledgement and the apology, but we need to also accept the fact that not all that much has changed over those years. In fact, if anything, it has got worse. Um, the Family Matters report here by Snake estimated that by 2030, the number of First Nations children out of home care will more than double again without profound and wholesale changes to legislation, policy and practice. And I forgot to mention that up here uh, today, the number has increased to approximately uh, 18,900. Um, I don't know if you can see that there. Um, Yes, so just down here says the number has increased to approximately 18,900 with First Nation children representing 40% uh, of all children out of home care. And that's a rise from 9,070. 9, uh, so uh, in 2008, when the apology was given. So we can see that this number is, is extraordinarily high, uh, more than doubled, in fact, in that period of time. Uh, so the Family Matters, the um, Family Matters report led by Snake estimated that by 
2030, the number of First Nationals children in out-of-home care will more than double again without profound and wholesale changes to legislation, policy and practice. Uh, it goes on to say, uh, Australian governments are responding to the crisis uh, at both the national and the state levels. Well, I don't think that they are. However, it is a crisis, but we're not seeing governments responding as they should to this. Um, and the, the point I want to raise, though, is this next one about permanency policies. Now, permanency policies are really about uh, ensuring that a child has a continual, uh, the same place of care, care we can use loosely, but basically it's the same place of care for an extended period of time, from the time that they're taken or removed from their families to the time that they leave uh, the child protection system, which is usually around 18 years uh, when they're 18. So this is an issue though, because adoption has been brought in as a way by which we can say that there is that permanency. Adoption does not guarantee permanency in anything but it. It also doesn't guarantee that the child will be safe in that care. But what it will guarantee, as they go on to say here, is that governments will withdraw from services so their view of what's happening for this kid just vanishes. Anything can happen within adoption as it could within any other uh, setting apart from the child protection system. Uh, so it says here, parents positive appear to be motivated by the best interest of children, so they say, tired of that statement, but moving Aboriginal children to permanent care orders has a range of benefits for the state, as I've just outlined. Not only does it appear progress is being made towards reducing overrepresentation in out-of-home care, it also absolves child protection departments of any further financial, practical or moral responsibility to these children or their families. Now, when we're looking at the child protection system, we need to consider what is appropriately the best outcome for kids, but we can see that this is not about just the best outcomes for kids. It's about adoption winds up being about the government uh, choosing a form of a system from which they can have no responsibility over whatsoever, financially, morally, or in any particular way. So this is an issue. The problem we have, I think, is that we as a society, as white people in particular, want to control what happens to coloured people and particularly indigenous people and it's wrong and it needs to change and the Child Protection Party is doing all that we can to advocate for a change in that system so that the communities themselves can control what happens to them and their children. Thanks everybody for watching, take care and more importantly be safe.